Now the first thing I'd like to show you is basically the agenda for today. What I'm going to show to every one of you is a basic introduction to the interface of the MetaTrader 4 platform, uh, a few different options as to how you can manage your positions, how you can open them, how you can modify and close them, of course, and obviously uh, at the end of the webinar we will be demonstrating how you can uh, do the same position entry modification uh, directly uh, from your charts, so-called trading from the charts. Now if you just bear with me for a second, I'll bring up the MT4 platform and we can get a quick view of the interface itself. This is uh, basically the uh, default layout of the MetaTrader 4 platform. This is what uh, all of you will see on your screens uh, when you open up the MT4 for the first time. Of course, the MetaTrader platform can be downloaded directly from the GDM homepage at gdmfx.com. Now, if I can direct your attention to the middle of the screen, you will notice there are four charts which are currently displayed. The EURUSD chart, the GBPUSD, also quite popular as the cable, the USD versus the Swiss franc on the bottom left, and the USD versus the Japanese yen on the bottom right. Of course, the MetaTrader does allow you to arrange uh, their charts in any way which uh, is suitable for you. And this is actually one of the functionalities which make it such a popular uh, platform amongst professional traders. Basically, what we can do is we can maximize any given chart, return it back to normal, so we can observe a few charts at the same time, or we can just even minimize one of the charts. And if we do that, we'll notice it will be available down here. Bottom left portion of the chart screen. Have a few tabs there. Those tabs allow us to switch in between the currently opened charts. It, it is quite useful, I should say, especially if, uh, let's say, we maximize a single chart and want to be able to quickly switch to another uh, trading instrument. For instance, currently I'm observing the USD versus the Swiss franc, and if I want to switch to another chart which I already have opened, the cable, the GBP versus the USD, I can just click on the tab below, and I will switch the charts. Simple as that. and of course extremely useful. Now, it of course depends on the trader himself or herself as to how he or she would like to arrange the interface of the MetaTrader. Some people prefer to maximize the chart, utilize as much as possible from the screen space uh, for charting on a single instrument. Some people prefer to uh, observe four, six, or even more charts at the same time on a single screen. And of course, there are a lot of traders who would actually even use more than one screen, as I'm doing right now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> now, if I can divert your attention to the left portion of the screen, let me highlight that for you, right here, 
on the left side. This is where we'll be focusing our attention for now. There are two windows which would be opened by default the first time you're uh, starting up your MetaTrader platform. The lower screen is the so-called navigator screen. It's this screen right here, this little window right here. Okay, this is the navigator. Now it's basically giving you a, a simple root tree of the uh, different sets of functionalities that you have in your MetaTrader platform. Currently, what you can see is that just under uh, GDMFX, the first uh, branch we have is labeled as Accounts. Just a second, and let me highlight that for you. There we go, Accounts. Under Accounts, we will be able to see if we are currently looking at a live account or a demo account. Basically, the MetaTrader will um, group different accounts that we're using on this platform uh, automatically for us. So, for instance, right now, we will notice that there is only one account here. It's a live account. And in the live account branch, we have a sub-branch, sub-note that gives us the account number and the name associated to this account. This is namely uh, one of my accounts that I'm going to be using today for demonstration purposes. Now if we log in with different accounts, which we can do of course in this specific uh, platform, uh, we can choose to save the account credentials for all those accounts and they will be instantly available for us as a little list in this branch of the navigator window. The way we log in, of course, is normally we would be asked, we we'll have a, we we'll receive a pop-up dialog box the second we open up the MetaTrader if it's not logged in by default. Uh, or we can just go to the top left corner of the application right up here in the file menu we can click on login and we'll get the login window as you can see there are just a few pieces of information we need to put there our account number our account password and of course we should always make sure to select the proper server right here so if we are trying to log in with a demo account we need to make sure that we are selecting server demo if we are trying to log in with our live account we need to select the live server option Every now and then I would receive a question from one of my traders saying that he's putting in his password, he's putting in his account number and he just can't log in. He keeps getting an error message that his credentials are incorrect when as a matter of fact he's highly certain that they are actually correct. Uh, well, one of the reasons why this could be happening is simply because uh, the wrong server option is selected. You cannot log in in a demo server using your live account credentials. Now, of course, uh, once this is out of the way, last thing we would see is the save account information option down here. Now this option will allow the MetaTrader to keep the credentials for this account so we don't have to log in every time we open up the application. It's just going to uh, log in automatically for us in our account and from the navigator window on the left side of the screen uh, close to the bottom we'll be able to switch in between our accounts instantly of course if we've saved the credentials of more than one live or demo accounts 
now let me get that login window out of the way and I would like to divert your attention to the navigator window once again now for those of you who are uh, just joining us let me highlight the navigator window it's right here on the left side of the screen there you go so this is what we're looking at right now the next branch we have under accounts is the indicatives branch it gives us a full list of the custom indicators that are available on our MetaTrader platform we can drag and drop them on any chart and that's how basically that's one of the ways how we can basically add an indicator to a chart window below the indicators branch we see the expert advisors the EAs there are two uh, two of them are uh, preloaded by default they come with the uh, GDM MetaTrader platform they're quite 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 basic of course um, and they're just provided I should say for uh, demonstration purposes my advice to anyone who would be looking into using a robot is to um, obviously uh, test it as much as he or she can before uh, committing any funds on a live account to a robot's control now I'm using the word robot this is this is basically uh, what an expert advisor is an EA uh, is wildly popular as robot now moving below we have custom indicators there we go and finally we have the scripts So this is basically the navigator window. It uh, pretty much uh, gives us a root directory of the different functionalities of the MetaTrader for a quick and easy access. Um, of course, uh, something I should definitely mention about the MetaTrader platform is that there is no single one way to activate or deactivate something. Whatever you want to do, you always have at least two or three options of doing it through the uh, applications interface so as a matter of fact a lot of people would just uh, get rid of the navigator window as I'm about to do right now I'm going to close it there we go and now on the leftmost side of our screen I'll actually even expand this so we get a better view there we go we now see only the market watch window Okay, the market watch window is uh, basically a list of trading instruments. Um, in this specific case, we see a, a few currency pairs that we can trade. We can click on any one of them to, let's say, to market. For instance, right now, I am clicking on the Australian dollar versus the USD, also known as the Aussie. If I right-click, I'll get a drop-down menu which allows me to place a new order to add a new chart window for the specific currency pair for this specific currency pair to view the tick chart or actually to even hide it from the current list let's say if, if I don't really have any interest in trading this specific currency pair the AUD versus the USD I don't want it uh, taking up my screen space so I can actually just click hide as I'm going to do right now and it's going to disappear from the list under the hide and hide all buttons we see uh, another one it's called show all if I click this you will notice that the list expands and it, it did expand significantly actually so now it's actually showing me everything that's available to me in this live account type every specific trading instrument which I can trade so for all of uh, all those of you who were um, wondering why I can't see uh, you know a, a specific instrument in my MetaTrader let's say why I can't see gold which is right down here marked in yellow gold and silver XAUUSD that's gold um, well this is uh, 
the most common uh, cause for why you cannot see a specific trading instrument in your market watch list. You just need to right click anywhere in the list and select show all and everything is going to appear once again. And of course there is a very neat functionality here. Once again right click just anywhere. Uh, you can hide using the hide button all the trading instruments you don't want, you don't need. And then you will see a sub-menu which is called sets. And the option we have here is save, save as, remove, and then we have a couple of predefined sets. Basically what this is, is this allows us to save the current selection, the list we've made by hiding and showing certain trading instruments. We can save it, we can give it a name, it will become available just on the bottom of this submenu where it says Forex and Forex all, the name that we've selected for the for our new list will be down there and we can switch in between the lists so that we don't have to go through hiding unnecessary instruments one by one every time. Um, once again of course uh, let me remind all those of you who are uh, uh, just joining us or uh, missed a few minutes from the beginning uh, by all means please do feel free to use the chat functionality of the webinar system. If you have any comment, um, any question, just uh, send it to us via the chat. I will be making regular stops every 5, 10, 15 minutes uh, to address all relevant questions. Uh, and for all those a uh, bit more advanced questions which are not uh, directly connected to the topic today, I will of course make sure to send you an answer to your email once uh, this webinar concludes. Right, moving along. This is pretty much the market watch window. We can add more information to it by right clicking drop down menu. We can for instance ask it to show us the high and low prices for the day for the specific instruments. We can actually ask it to uh, show us the time. There we go. As we can see it's showing us uh, GMT plus one right now. This is basically uh, London time. Uh, daylight saving time is on in Europe. <laughs> so we're one hour ahead actually and uh, I should definitely say I am actually broadcasting to all of uh, all of you from our newest uh, trading center in Europe. Once again Kirill Tsenkov is my name and if you have any questions you can use the chat or you can just send us an email after the webinar it will be my pleasure to uh, address those questions and to assist you in any way I can. Now what I'm going to do to take it further is I am going to close the market watch window by hitting the little X on its upper right corner and as you can see we're basically left with just a single huge chart. Now below this chart on the bottom of our screen we see something which is quite quite useful for every MetaTrader user. I'm going to expand its window. It's called the terminal this is a terminal window. It has a few tabs on the bottom. Uh, the currently selected tab is the trade tab which is basically uh, going to show us all of our currently working positions. It's currently all the live positions we have we're going to see them there. Pending orders as well we're going to see our uh, net running profit or loss from all the open positions and as a matter of fact just to demonstrate I'm going to place a pending order on the cable let's say I'm going to put a sell stop uh, just a second all the way down here there we go now in 
the terminal window, let me highlight that for you, you will notice that a new line appeared. There it is. Okay, now this is our new uh, pending order, our new sell stop order. We can see on the leftmost side the unique ticket number for the position. We can see the time and date at which it was uh, created, the type of the position in the next column, which is sell stop, size, one lot, um, trading instrument, GBP USD the price at which it's going to be executed. Do we have a uh, stop loss or a take profit? No, we don't. So actually we have zeros there for now. And the current market level, the current market price, which is on the, which is the last number, basically to the right. <laughs> yes, I, I do see a, a question I would like to, to address. Uh, and the question, uh, from one of our viewers today is the way I created the pending order was that trading from charts? Uh, yes, we, you can say that. I did create the pending order directly from the chart uh, and the message I got from the MetaTrader was the so-called one-click trading uh, disclaimer. It's uh, basically the first time you try to activate one-click trading or you try to do something, a trade open or close a position from the chart you're going to see this uh, disclaimer. It's basically warning you uh, that although it's very useful, very handy to be able to do things with a single click, it might as well be a bit more risky for you as uh, you might uh, unintentionally click here or there, here or there and uh, you know, get yourself in a position you don't really want to. This is a warning that's always displayed uh, and of course you should keep it in mind. Now, I'm going to get rid of that position for the time being and let's get back to the terminal window and once again we are looking at the very very bottom of the screen on the MetaTrader in the terminal window this was the trade tab first one on the left now I'm clicking on the account history tab this is basically showing us uh, an account statement and we can filter the period for which the information is displayed Right now, this account, obviously being uh, set up by me for demonstration purposes, doesn't, doesn't really have all that history to it. Uh, so what we see in it is we see that there was just one single pending order, which was created a few minutes ago, and then removed a few minutes ago. So it's actually uh, showing up in the account history as something old. If I right click anywhere in the account history, I will get a drop down menu uh, and I can select the period for which I want all of this information displayed. Uh, I can add a few additional columns, information like the commissions column, the taxes column, comments column, um, or I can hide them if I've already uh, made them visible. And of course, I do have the opportunity to export an account statement. So right down here where it says save as report and save as detailed report, this is basically where I can um, save up the account statement on my desktop, print it on my printer and uh, go put it in my records, I guess, or use it with my accountant or even uh, show off to someone who doesn't believe my uh, track record. <laughs> so it's uh, just a nice, a nice functionality which um, a lot of people are not really familiar with. But yes, you can uh, export your own account statements, your own reports directly from your MetaTrader platform. Now, the next tab we have alerts, mailbox, market, signals, code base, experts, journal, etc., etc. Different tabs. Uh, by all means, go through them. They're quite interesting. There's a lot you can see there, uh, but we will not really focus on them today, as we would like to keep this webinar on a more introductory level. Of course, uh, 
I should mention that those of you who are interested in more advanced features um, of the MetaTrader platform should definitely send me an email. Uh, we do organize webinars every week and uh, quite frequently we do organize on-demand webinars or, or uh, a specific a webinar on a specific topic which was requested by our traders. So if you have an idea, if you have a request, just send us an email at webinar. Um, webinars at gdmfx.com uh, and we will by all means take it into consideration. Now this is basically the terminal window. Now let's say once again that I really want to maximize the chart. I really want to use as much space as I can for my charting so I can actually close that window as well. And now, as you can see, the chart, currently active chart, GBPUSD, is, is really um, dominating my, my screen. It's taking up pretty much all of the space. Not really all of it, but uh, most of it, definitely. Of course, I've maximized a single chart, but once again, in the top right corner, I can make it uh, smaller, I can display more than one chart, I can resize them in any way I want, I can even fit eight or ten different charts on my screen if I want to look at more than one instrument at the same time. But once again, if I've chosen to maximize a single chart, on the very bottom of the screen, uh, of the chart, on the very bottom of the chart to the left, there are a few taps which will allow me to switch between the open charts without minimizing them. Um, let me highlight that for you. So it's down here, bottom left corner. Okay, bottom left corner of the chart window we have the open chart tabs which we can use to switch the charts. Right, great. Now this brings us to the chart itself simply since I got rid of everything else on the screen. <laughs> now we do have to look at the chart and this is once again where the uh, MetaTrader's strength really uh, comes into play. This is one of the top reasons why so many traders around the world choose to use this platform and why it is the choice of the professional Forex trader. The reason, once again, is the chart. The fact that it's fully, fully customizable. Right click anywhere on it, you get a lot of different options here but I'm just going to go straight to the bottom where it says properties. When I click on properties, I get a customization window which I can use to change pretty much everything in the charts um, design. I can change every single color I see. So let's say I don't want a black background, I can make it white. I want all the lines black, grid, I'll just leave that at gray. But Let's say I don't really like that green color, it's too old school. Let's choose something a bit more modern. There we go, steel blue. Bar down, crimson bullish candle, bearish candle. Once again, we can really get wild here and change pretty much everything. We also have a second tab, top left corner of the properties window. It says common on it. This allows me to switch a few uh, on and off a few other options. For instance, I do have an option asking me if I want to show the ask line. Yes, I do. If I want to show period separators, which are basically the lines for days, weeks, or months, depending on the period of the chart, 
let's say if I'm uh, looking at a 30 minute, one hour, two hour and so on uh, period, I'm going to see a, a vertical line which is showing me exactly where a day ended and a new day began. So let's activate that as well. I'll click OK and as you can see the chart changed completely. Right click once again and in the drop down menu itself we do have even more options or shortcuts to a few of the customization options if you will. So for instance I'm gonna get off get rid of the grid in the background to clean up the chart a little bit and I should mention that right clicking again I can add it back at any point in time. I can add volumes as I just did or remove them and then I can actually add the one click trading which you see right now in the top left corner of the chart one click trading. Uh, this is basically a quick buy, quick sell uh, little toolbox. I just need to click the buy or sell button and the position is entered. In the middle between the buttons I do have the lots, lot size selector so I can select if I want this to be one lot or in this case I've selected 0 0.10, 0 0.1 lot. If I click the button it's done. The position will be opened. This is why it's called one click trading. You might choose to use it or or not to use it. You might show it or hide it on your chart at any point of time. I yes, I see another uh, question. <laughs> By all means, it will be my pleasure to, to address that. Um, basically, this is exactly what I was talking about. The question is: um, uh, Is this the uh, disclaimer, the warning window we saw earlier? Is it associated with this? Yes. Uh, one click trading. The first time you activate it and you try to use it, so the first time you try to use it, uh, you will get a warning window which we saw earlier. Uh, and you have to agree with that window, with that disclaimer, before you can actually start using one click trading or trading from charts. Simply uh, because we want you to be aware of the risk that uh, one click opening position, one click closing position, so on, is very handy, very useful, uh, but if you're not careful, you might unintentionally click somewhere and get yourself in a position you don't want to. Now let me hide it once again, and we'll be back at our chart. We saw just a few moments ago how we could change all the colors of the set chart and now I want to demonstrate something highly specific. I am going to reduce the size of the chart once again and we will see that the other open charts, the other three open charts are actually unchanged. Basically the MetaTrader allows you to change a single chart without affecting everything in the platform simply because uh, professional traders would sometimes have a different visual setup for one instrument and a different visual setup for another instrument. Now, if I want to be able to quickly, uh, seamlessly add the same color uh, setup, the same color design to all of the charts I'm using, there is a way to do that so I don't have to manually go through changing black with white and, and green with red and so on uh, every single time I open up a new chart or I switch to another chart window. It's very very simple. The way it works is you just right click in the chart that you like, you go to template submenu and then you have a button It's called save template. So you can save this template file anywhere you want in your computer. Now uh, my advice of course as a person who's been uh, using the MetaTrader quite a bit is do save it outside of the MetaTrader folder. Save it on your desktop. 
Uh, every now and then the MetaTrader will want to update itself, to download some updates, as pretty much everything else in your computer. Uh, and a few custom files like this one uh, might get lost in the process. So just put it on your desktop or anywhere outside of the MetaTrader uh, program folder so you can make sure that you, you don't lose uh, your design. Under the Save button, we have the Load Template button, which would, of course, allow us to uh, load up a template we've created before and apply it to this specific chart. So basically, this is the quick way to uh, create a design, visual design for your chart, different color settings, save them, and then just click Add New Charts and uh, apply the template you've created for yourself. And let me demonstrate that for you. I'm going to click on Save uh, Template right now. Simple as that. I'm going to give it a name, MT4 Webinar, for instance, and I'm going to save it. There we are. Now let's switch to the USD Swiss franc chart. It's black, has a few other custom, a uh, few other indicators on it. It's pretty much nothing in common with what we've been doing on the EURUSD chart. So right click, I'll go to template, load template, and then I'll just select MT4 webinar. This is the one we created. I will open it up, and there we go. Now, two of our charts are with the same color settings, and we didn't have to go through manually changing color by color everything on the second chart as well. So I can repeat the same load template process to all of the open charts and to all new charts I keep on adding. As a matter of fact, I can add quite a few. Uh, it doesn't have to be just four open charts. I can add 40 if I want to. Uh, it's actually a, really a matter of how much my, my computer can take. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to move to the top of the MetaTrader window. Let me focus your attention there. Uh, and I would like to demonstrate the different toolbars we see on the top of the MetaTrader. So we are going to be looking at this one right up here. All right, and we'll make sure, of course, to go through all of them. But if you do have any questions, uh, by all means, just use the chat, send us, uh, send the questions to us right now or uh, after the webinar. You can send it by email, and it will be my pleasure to address them. Right. Now, the first toolbar uh, we see Right, at, right up here. It has a few um, chart options. Once again, we can move it around the MetaTrader window so it, we don't necessarily have to agree with the default setup. Or we can even pop it up uh, as a separate little window. There you go. So I uh, I undocked it, as it's called. It will be a bit easier to spot. Right there. First thing we have, the currently selected option, this is the pointer. Second one we have, crosshair. So there you go, I just selected the crosshair. It's a very, very helpful tool. It basically, it's basically giving us a cross made up of a vertical and a horizontal line. The horizontal line, if we trace it all the way to the right, we will see that it's actually pointing to the current price level at which um, our, uh, the pointer of our mouse is focused on the chart. If we trace the vertical line, we will see that it's pointing at the bottom of the chart to the specific date and time uh, of the chart, once again, to which our, the pointer of our mouse is uh, focused. There is another functionality which is quite useful with the crosshair. 
and this is the click and drag functionality. So if I click down here and I start dragging all the way up, we will notice that three numbers appear separated by a slash. The first number, it's giving us the number of bars or candlesticks in this case. So it's counting them. As I drag to the right, and I'm probably I'm wondering how many candles that is, it's uh, actually, Crosshair is actually counting for me, so it's 104 all the way up here, or 23. If I get closer to the point of origin where I originally clicked. The second thing we see, it's actually the points change in the price from the point of origin from the place where I originally clicked down here all the way up here that's 2542 points now uh, ladies and gentlemen please uh, make no mistake here this is not pips it's points uh, in the most common case uh, 10 points would be uh, one pip when talking about Forex but of course you can also consult um, the uh, trading instruments section of the uh, GDMFX website for more info. Now talking about the last digit, the third digit on the right, when we click and drag it's actually the current price level at which it, we end up pointing. The original price level from where we originally clicked is still marked by the horizontal line and we can trace it to the right. Okay. Now moving back to the toolbar itself, the third thing we have is the vertical line. So we can use it to add vertical lines on our chart, make that a bit thicker. And we can add as many as we want. So if we want to mark a specific point in time where uh, uh, for future reference where something happened or something began happening, we can use a vertical line and we can place it there on our chart so that later on uh, when we get back to the chart it will uh, remind us or it will serve as a point of reference. Now I'm going to remove those vertical lines real quick and we'll move to the horizontal line which is basically uh, a static straight horizontal line which once again we can place on our chart if we want to let's say mark a support level or a resistance level um, or even an entry level so if there is a specific price level which we would like to mark on our chart we can use the horizontal line. After that by default we would see the equidistant channel too It's once again a drag and drop uh, routine. I'll increase, there we go, the width of the line so it's a bit more visible for you. Basically what this is doing, it's, it's creating a couple of parallel uh, lines, diagonal lines for us. By uh, clicking and dragging on the chart, we actually establish the angle and the starting point. Um, of the baseline and the MetaTrader is just creating a second parallel line. Later on we can just adjust the distance between them. Let's say if we want to mark a channel movement as I just did on the chart. Double clicking on any uh, of those objects will select it on the chart and it will actually stay selected until you uh, double click it again. 
So once you select any one of those, you can just click delete and remove it from your chart. If you don't delete it, it will actually stay there uh, for um, quite some time. <laughs> they, basically, the MetaTrader platform does remember um, what you did last time. So when you close it and open it up later on, a few days or a few even weeks later on, it will just um, show you everything that, uh, that you left. So you will not have to redo your lines or uh, your channels or your settings. Basically, the system is memorizing everything for you. Next thing after the equidistant channel, we do have the Fibonacci retracement tool, which is a bit hard to see. Uh, so let me change it, the colors for you. Uh, just a second. There we go. Very popular tool using Fibonacci numbers, uh, which is uh, used generally to um, display uh, support and resistance uh, levels uh, when you extend it uh, from a high to a low or from a low to a high. And of course, it's fully modifiable, so you can actually change the uh, levels at which the lines are displayed as well. You can change their colors. You can even remove a few or add a few more lines and they're going to be extended automatically whenever you use this tool. Now I just changed a few colors on those instruments and I uh, on those tools and I changed the width, the thickness of a few lines and then I deleted those instruments. But what you should bear in mind is that if I try to put them on the chart one more time, my last selection, the settings I selected the last time, uh, would be remembered. So the, I, don't, I will not have to make the lines thicker or change their color for you again. It's actually going to uh, happen by default from now on. Until I change it again, of course. So there we go, let's remove Fibonacci retracement. Then we have a few label and uh, text tools we can place on the chart. If we want to label something special or maybe even leave a reminder for ourselves. There you go, that's how it looks. Now, um, frequently I uh, receive questions as to what's the difference between the text tool from this toolbar and the label tool. Well, the text tool is static on the chart. For instance, when I scroll my, my, my mouse back and forth, I'm essentially uh, moving back, looking, in, looking back at the chart, going back in time. Uh, and the text tool will stay, it will be uh, anchored to where I originally uh, placed it, while the label tool will keep scrolling back with me, so it's essentially always going to be in front of my eyes, uh, and that's quite useful if there is something important that you want to write on your screen. And finally, of course, we do have the arrows and thumbs up, uh, a few uh, useful little tricks, little things you can put on your uh, chart if you want to mark a good position or a bad position. They're quite handy. And this pretty much takes care of this uh, little toolbar, the line studies toolbar. Well, let's put it back where it came from. The next toolbar we see, I'm once again going to undock it. There we go, is the period, uh, the period toolbar, it's a so-called periodicity <laughs> toolbar. Um, basically this, those few buttons allow me to change the chart period. Currently we're looking at H4, the four hour period, which means that every single one of those candlesticks on our uh, chart is a, represents a four hour session. It's basically showing us where the price started 
the first second of the four hours, uh, where it ended at the last second of the four hours, and the highest and the lowest point it ever reached during the four hour session. So if four hour is a bit too slow for us, uh, what we can do is we can switch to a 15 minute chart. There we go. Now every candle represents 15 minutes. Or we can switch to 30 minutes, or even one day, where every candle represents one full day. Okay, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Now, moving to the next toolbar, it's just above the periods toolbar. Let me undock it for you. This is uh, chart, general chart settings. Currently, for instance, the type of the chart is the candlestick chart, but we can change this to the so-called uh, bar chart. We can zoom in and zoom out using this toolbar. Now you will see, you will notice that the, the chart appears a bit different. It's called a bar chart simply because the um, objects we see visualized on our screen do tend to look a little bit like prison bars. <laughs> uh, essentially, they're actually showing us the same information as the candlestick, basically where the price opened in the beginning of the session, where the price ended up at the end of the session, and the highest and lowest points. Um, but due to the, the difference in the way they're visualized, um, basically they're uh, not really so popular as the candlestick type of chart, simply because the candlestick type of chart, which we were looking at until a moment ago, also known as the Japanese candlestick, um, is quite popular for the so-called candlestick formations. So there are different visual formations you can distinguish uh, on the chart, which will help you um, anticipate the short-term uh, movement of the market, better anticipate, I should say. Um, give you a, a good idea as to when trends about to reverse or uh, give you a signal as to when you want to activate a position. So basically this is quite useful with the uh, candlestick chart and that's why we should definitely note that um, up to date it is the most popular chart type being used on the financial markets. So let's get back to it. I'm clicking on the candlesticks and there we go. Now we do have a third type of the chart, the line chart. Just bear with me for a second and I'm going to change its color as well. So it's it's going to be easier to, to see. There we go. Now it does not display, I should say, as much information as the bar chart and the candlestick chart. Basically it's just giving us the last price, the last closing uh, price of the uh, specific period. So every point on this line graph represents a period of, uh, in this case, one day. If we switch it back to 30 minutes, M30, then it's going to represent 30 minutes. And it's giving us the last price at the end of this 30 minute or one day or whatever session. It didn't, it's not really showing us where the price started at the beginning of the session. It's not showing us the highest and the lowest point it reached. It's just giving us the last closing price. Of course, it does have its uses as a chart type, graph type, I should say. Uh, namely, that it's a bit easier to distinguish chart formations, like a double bottom or a head and shoulders using a line graph, simply because there is less noise, less visual noise, I should say. Less distractions <laughs> is also a good way to put it. Uh, right after the three types of charts, we will see the zoom in and zoom out buttons, which we actually already used. Uh, we can use them to, uh, once again, to zoom out and zoom in on the candles themselves or whatever the chart type is that we're currently using. 
and then we have auto scroll and chart shift buttons which are currently active. Auto scroll is basically uh, making the MetaTrader push to the most recent price every time the chart gets updated which is sometimes um, a few times per second as a matter of fact. Uh, so that we don't have to manually scroll to the front all the time. We can deactivate it of course especially if we want to scroll back and see observe study what the market did yesterday. So if we don't want the chart returning to the front all the time we can deactivate it and we can focus on the past. And the next thing of course the next button which is currently active is the chart shift button. I'm going to deactivate it and you can see what happens to the chart. Now I'm going to activate it again. There we go. Now this is basically um, allowing us to place uh, an empty space to offset the chart a little bit on the far right side uh, to leave some empty space we can use for our projections or for our labels or um, just simply to allow us to better observe the chart. We can control the size of this uh, empty space, this offset. We do have a little pointer, let me highlight it for you, up here. go all the way up here. So if we click and drag this uh, little pointer we will give ourselves a bigger offset or a smaller offset depending on what our preference and once again depending on what our needs are. Now after the chart, the auto scroll and the chart shift buttons we have the indicator buttons, the indicator drop down actually which uh, gives us different categories of uh, technical indicators and from there we can add uh, all the technical indicators that are available in the MetaTrader to our chart. The most popular or the most recently used ones will be on top here and then we have the categories which are the trend technical indicators, the oscillators, volumes, the Bill Williams indicators and the custom indicators which we can uh, add to our platform just by downloading their files and putting them um, in the indicators folder of the MetaTrader. Now let's add one real quick. Uh, for instance I want to add the Bollinger Bands. Uh, of course, I should know that I will not be focusing on technical indicators themselves today. Uh, as we already mentioned, we want to keep this webinar on a more introductory level. But just for demonstration's sake, it's as easy as that. I, I clicked on the drop down, I selected an indicator, I clicked on it, and it displayed on the chart. Now it's pretty simple, I'll just right click on the indicator itself and I'll delete it. We have another button here for periods, so this, this is a second option we can use to change the period on the chart and then we have the template quick access button. So just as we said, pretty much you can do everything on the MetaTrader at least in three different ways. Every, every single action you want to take there are at least two or three different ways to do it. Now let's move on to the last toolbar and I'm going to undock it once again. There we go. It's uh, quite major, so-called standard tools, but basically it will allow us to, let's say the first button allows us to add a new chart. We do have a few uh, categories at the bottom, we can call them a few different asset classes. So we have the forex category, the indices, metals, 
gold, metal, silver, energies. This is basically the uh, crude oil, the West Texas Intermediate, and the natural gas. For now, let's say we want to add a gold chart. So let me just click on the gold chart, and there we go. We added yet another new chart to the window. Now I'm going to go to the template button. I'm going to click load template, and we go, we're going to load up the design which we created earlier on through the webinar itself. Ah, yes, uh, right. There is a quite quite an interesting uh, question I want to address. The question itself is uh, about the two lines which you are uh, seeing um, uh, as the price showing you the price action, the current price. What are the two lines? There you go. One of them is red. One of them is black. Okay, so that's an excellent question. By default, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, you should know that um, the MetaTrader displays the bid price. It's not giving you the middle between the bid and the ask, or in other words, the price to buy and the price to sell. It's not giving you the middle, it's giving you the bid. So if you want to be able to see also the ask price, uh, as we demonstrated earlier, you can right-click on the chart, go to uh, go on the bottom of the drop-down menu where it's properties, preferences, click there, and in the second tab, the comments tab, you can uh, click on the option that says show ask line. Let's do it right now, as a matter of fact. So I'm right-clicking on the chart, I'm going down to properties, and this is the properties uh, window. I'm going to go to the second tab, which is on the top left corner, the common tab, and then inside we have a show period separator and show ask line, which we selected earlier. If I deselect them, we'll be left only with the bid line. Normally it's, uh, it's black, or if you change the foreground color to something else, uh, it's going to be colored differently. So there you go, now we're looking at the bid only. Yes, excellent. Oh, well, thank you as well for the question. <laughs> right. Um, moving on to the next button after the Add New Chart Window button on the standard toolbar is we have the Profile button. Okay. So we made a few changes to the design of a chart, to the template of a chart, and we saved that template. But uh, there are also a lot of preferences and settings to the full picture to the full MetaTrader interface, which we changed a bit. So we might want to save it as a user profile, uh, especially if there are uh, a few different uh, people are using the MetaTrader platform at home, you know, at the same uh, home computer. So you want to create a user profile, let's say, for yourself, for your spouse, um, and you will not be messing up each other's settings. And of course, we should also note that just as in uh, uh, trading the chart patterns, uh, so does with the, the full interface, uh, there are professional traders which would have different setups for trading different instruments or even for trading different strategies. Now, moving on to the next button. It is the Market Watch button. So basically, this is allowing us now to reopen the windows which we closed at the beginning of the webinar. And there we are. The first window is the market watch. It's followed by the, uh, the button for the data window, which is not so widely used. We get rid of the market watch for now so we can demonstrate the data window. It's basically, basically giving you a few pieces of information on the specific chart. So I'm moving my pointer around and that information is changing. When I focus the pointer of my mouse on a specific point in time and in price on the chart, the data window on the left is displaying that information for me. I'm saying it's not so widely used simply because the same pieces of information are also displayed on the very bottom 
uh, in the right corner of the MetaTrader application. So basically now we had two uh, windows showing the same info. Uh, but right down here All the way down here. This is where where the same info um, is displayed. So there you go. When I move the mouse, you can see it down there, separated by a few lines. The same info essentially. Okay. There we go. So we can reopen the Market Watch window. Let's make it a bit smaller. Uh, we can reopen the navigator window. We can reopen the terminal window, which all of those we closed earlier on to give ourselves more screen space for the chart. So now we are reopening them. And so essentially nothing is lost. Even if we close something uh, from the... Uh, um, by closing something I mean a window or I... Um, toolbar, we can uh, display it again in the MetaTrader. Not a big deal. Uh, of course, I should make a note here, uh, this does not refer to closing a position. <laughs> I'm only talking about interface and windows, <laughs> not positions. Sometimes when you close a position, there is no coming back. So by all means, please bear in mind uh, that that little uh, little thing and you'll be safe on the market. Now I'll get rid of those additional windows once again. And then we have the strategy tester window which opens up a new um, strategy tester button I mean which opens up a new panel on the bottom of the chart just be uh, bottom of the window just below the chart. Uh, this is basically allowing us to back test safely a uh, an expert advisor, a trading robot. Um, so we can test it in, uh, with the information that's already uh, loaded up in our chart for previous days, weeks, months, uh, and we can get a, an analysis as, as to what the results of this robot would have been if we really used it on our account. Um, it is an indicative analysis, of course, um, it's coming together with the MetaTrader always, uh, but we should bear in mind that uh, our uh, brain is and our experience is, of course, the best uh, analyst as to a trading robot or a trading strategy's performance. Okay, let me get rid of that real quick. And then we have the new order button, meta editor, and the auto trading buttons. Um, the meta trader editor is uh, basically a shortcut to another application, which is a um, programming environment. Uh, the meta trader does have its own programming language called MetaQuotes. Uh, no, sorry, MetaQuotes is the corporation behind meta trader. It's actually called MQL. So in this case of MetaTrader 4, this is the programming language MQL4, uh, which some very, very advanced traders with uh, uh, programmers or developers background, computer science background essentially, uh, would use that, develop that environment, that additional application to create their own robots, custom indicators or scripts. And that button there is the shortcut. Uh, and after that, we have the auto trading button, the very last button on this button on this uh, toolbar to the right. Um, it's basically switching. It's a general on and off button for all the uh, robots which we've placed in our charts. Now back to the new order button. I'm clicking that, and I'm getting the new order window, which brings us to. Uh, opening, modifying, and closing positions in the MetaTrader.
there we go so new order we clicked the new order button from the standard toolbar I'll get rid of the window for now we can also do it uh, just a second we can also do it by right clicking the chart itself going to trading new order we have a shortcut keyboard key F9 or we can actually do it from the market watch right click new order so once again quite a few different ways to go about uh, opening the new order window but once you're on it, there are a few things you're going to see. A small uh, chart, small tick chart on the left of the specific instrument. And by specific instrument, I should know that the, basically the current chart which you're looking at, the currently active chart, this is the instrument that's going to be pre-selected in the new order window once you click the button for it. So the currently active chart here is the Euro USD, and as we can see uh, under the symbol field of the new order window, Euro USD has been pre-selected for us. It's right here. okay there we go now we do have a drop down here so we can uh, change the instrument with something else it is a bit uh, less effective since we do have to scroll through a big list uh, but we do have that option as well now under the symbol field we have the volume field this is where of course we select the size of the transaction that we want to initiate, the size of the position. Now in one of our um, next webinars I'm going to be talking about risk management, uh, Forex risk management, uh, and we're going to focus more attention on how to really um, choose the proper size, the proper position size according to your account and your trading strategy. Um, currently the number one is displayed in the volume field which is one lot of course now in the case of Forex uh, one lot is always a hundred thousand uh, currency units of the base currency uh, as I'm sure you're all perfectly familiar uh, but let me just repeat it just in case the base currency um, is always on the left so in the case of Euro USD it's a hundred thousand euro that's the size of this transaction, a bit high. Um, but we can make it smaller or bigger using this little drop down or simply by uh, writing through our keyboard. So we can even make it 12 lots or 120. Or I can select something very, very small as a 0 0.05. Stop loss and take profit fields are currently inactive. They will. Uh, become available to us once the position itself is initiated. And under that we have a comment, so we can leave a comment to ourselves, something that's going to print out in our um, account statement, a reminder or uh, any, any point of reference, anything that's going to make our, uh, uh, account, uh, our life easier. We can just leave it empty, as I do most of the time. Uh, under comment we do have the type of the order field type and the currently selected option is market execution um, that's pretty simple w what market execution means is if I click it right now um, it's going to happen it's going to be placed on the market if I click on market execution I'm gonna get a small drop down which gives me a second option and that's the pending order option so if I don't want to buy right now at the current market price I can ask the system to wait for a specific price which I will specify and if the market goes there 
to automatically buy or sell for me so-called uh, waiting order as well so for uh, example's sake let's place a live order this is the uh, euro versus the US dollar we've selected a very very small volume of 0 0.05 uh, lots there we go I'm just gonna click sell and it's done simple as that now we do see let me zoom a little bit we will see a line once again appearing on our chart on the very left side of the chart mark that for you right here we see the number of the position the unique ticket number of the position followed by the type of the position which is a cell position and of course the lot size 0 0.05 so it allowing us to uh, uh, basically better visualize uh, as to what this specific line is, is really uh, pointing to especially if we have more than one positions on the same instrument on the same chart at the same time now let me demonstrate I'll open up the trading the terminal window again there we go now you will go to the trade tab you will notice that my position is actually uh, open live and working and I'm uh, I have a small profit small net profit of 25 cents which I do think I'm about to lose uh, but anyway it's uh, for the webinar's sake it's okay <laughs> now this is our live position right here I've selected it I've marked it on the very very far right side there is there is little X this will allow me to close the position really quickly it's right here really 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 quickly I will be able to close this position if I click the little X we will not do it for now I'll just right click the line itself and then we have a few options place another new order close this the selected one the select order or modify or delete in this case we will not be able to delete it simply because it's already working but I can click on uh, I can sure modify it so there we go now this is the modify window it's allowing us to put a, a stop loss and a take profit the first option I have up here is to specify a stop loss and a take profit in terms of points now once again please ladies and gentlemen bear in mind uh, one point is not necessarily one pip in this case ten points are one pip so if I type in there um, let's say uh, ten points thinking that it's you know it's, it's going to the market's going to move by ten pips uh, actually it's going to move just by a single pip and the position will stop off so let's see I'm going to write let's say 150 this is 150 pips uh, 150 points it's actually 100 uh, 15 pips now this is displayed in the button below the red button below which says copy as pretty much instantly can even make 200 and if I click the copy as button my stop loss level will be uh, the stop loss field will be filled out automatically copy as button basically uh, contains the current market price and it is keep it, it just keeps on changing and changing uh, and when you click on the 
uh, when you add a few points on top there, uh, they're just added on top of the current market price. Simply because the market's moving a bit too fast, you don't want to have to chase it. So you can use that. Or you can just go and type in the stop loss in the stop loss field entirely manually. There is actually, there is no right or wrong way to do it. Uh, just, of course, always make sure you're putting in the right numbers. Okay, now let's put our take profit in the same way, 200 points, it's 20 pips. It's added on top of the current market price. I'll click the copy as button and now the take profit and the stop loss here are basically uh, full. Okay. Okay. There we go. Let me just demonstrate another way. We can change the stop loss and the take profit. Or we can do that even, uh, what should I say, even manually. Right, simple as that. Now there we go. I clicked on the modify button and the stop loss and take profit was successfully added to my order. And now I can actually see them on the chart window as well as two red lines all the way to the left on the chart. They are marked with the same ticket number because they belong to the same order. Uh, and with the type of the, of, of the of the line itself. So uh, the higher red line says SL, that's stop loss, and the one that's lower says TP, that's take profit. Basically what we did is we successfully modified our position. We added a stop loss, we added a take profit. Now, how about we change them from the chart? That's quite handy, especially in a high frequency trading situation where we want to be quick. What I can do is I can click on the stop loss, hold the button down and drag it higher, release it, that's it. My stop loss is bigger now, it's modified. Click, drag it lower, release it, I modified it again. So that, as you can see, it's quite faster. Now, you get a uh, little hint window which is telling you how much you're asking you're actually risking to lose in terms of cash and points uh, with this specific stop loss that's currently set up so when you start dragging it on the very left side you will also notice that the same things are being shown to you uh, next to the ticket number and the type of the line so basically you don't have to calculate all those numbers in your head they're actually being displayed to you as you go about doing it so there we go I made it even smaller and now I'm gonna do the same to my um, take profit I'm gonna make it a bit bigger ah excellent simple as that Uh, just a second, let me check if we have any um, questions uh, and we'll continue with uh, placing a, a few more positions uh, for demonstration's uh, sake, of course. Nope, we don't. Okay, excellent. So let's move to the gold chart. See that there's, uh, there's been a a little bit of a slump in the last few hours, a little bit of a bearish move on gold. Uh, we are going to cover the topic of uh, chart patterns in one of our next webinars. By all means, uh, you're all invited and there we are going to explain why this happened and uh, why is this thing called a double top and how you can use it 
in your trading so that next time maybe you can benefit from this significant drop in the price of gold. Actually, let's use the crosshair, measure it. So there you go, in the last two and a half hours, that's uh, <laughs> it's quite a healthy drop. As a matter of fact, I see what I see here. I see five, six dollars drop in price of gold. So that could have been five, six hundred dollars of profit in trading account. Uh, for all those of you who are following uh, the chart patterns and who know how to properly trade a double top formation. Now let's place a, another order here. I'm going to put a pending order this time. Uh, first I'm going to do it from the new order button and then we're going to do it from the chart. So there we go, now we have the new order button and the new order window. We will notice that the currently selected instrument is gold simply because we are on the gold chart and then we click on the new order button. Now, mark type of the order market execution, we don't really want that, we're going to change to pending order. And then we have a few other options. First off, we are able to put, uh, the, to choose the type of the pending order, there are four types. Um, in this little drop down right here by limit, sell limit, buy stop and sell stop orders. Uh, let me just start off by reassuring everyone that you do not have to remember all those simply because the system will not allow you to put the wrong position even if you try. Uh, of course I will go through explaining what, what they mean um, really briefly. Uh, they're actually pretty straightforward. A buy limit order means buy if the price goes down. Uh, and down to where, of course, you specify. So let's say you want to buy if the price goes all the way down in the next field where it says at price. In this field we specify down to where. So let's say down to 1,295. So if it goes all the way down to 1,295 dollars per troy ounce, that's when we want to buy what, how much? We want to buy 0 0.5 lots of gold. And we can put an expiry date and time, which means that if it does not happen by the date and time which we specify, the system will automatically delete it. So I'm going to put same time uh, a, bit, a couple of hours later tomorrow. If it's not, if it didn't happen by then, just delete it. I'm going to click on place. Um, and that's it. Simple as that. If you observe the chart carefully, you will see the green line. It appeared once again. And this is now a new waiting position. It's going to wait for the price to go all the way down to the green line and it's going to buy automatically 0 0.05 lots of gold for us. If I go down to the trade tab of the terminal window, I will see the pending order. It's below the open positions, the working positions, so there is no profit or loss on it simply because it's not active yet. I can right click it and I can click modify and I will be able to add a stop loss and a take profit. So once again a buy limit is a buy position if you want to buy at a price lower than the current. Vice versa buy stop is a buy position if we want to buy at a price higher than the current. Sell stop and sell limit are essentially uh, the opposite. So sell limit is sell at the price which is higher 
than the current price and sell stop is sell at the price which is lower than the current price but as I said even if you try to let's say put a buy limit which is buy if the price buy at the lower price than the current one if I try to put the buy limit and I specify a higher price the system will just tell me that it's not possible the bottom line is all I need to know is I need to know if I want to buy or sell and where at what price I want to do that how long do I want to wait uh, that's going to take care of uh, the, of the pending order for me now let's see stop loss if we're buying all the way down at 1295 we might want to put the stop loss even lower so I'm gonna put it five dollars lower and the take profit obviously needs to be higher so 1300 now we have two buttons modify and delete we can remove the expiry date if we decide that we don't we no longer want the time limitation as to the uh, as to this waiting position if I click the yellow button on the right delete I'm just going to get rid of the pending order it's going to be deleted or I can click modify there we go and now the take profit and stop loss are already um, placed on my chart on my gold chart I can visualize them now if I drag them in the same way from the chart I can modify them and if I drag the pending order itself I will be able to modify the price of activation and the stop loss and take profit of this pending order will be also modified accordingly simple as that now you cannot drag and drop uh, just like that uh, live working position simply because it's already uh, bought or sold on the market so you can change the price at which you bought or, or sold as easily but it's quite handy for pending orders <laughs> okay now uh, what shall we do here uh, right click it and delete it from the screen or delete it down from the terminal Anyone of you guys have any uh, any preference? How would you want us to delete this one? From the terminal. <laughs> okay. Well, the quickest one wins. Uh, right. So I'm going all the way down. I'm selecting the pending order. Going all the way to the right. On top of the little X. I click the little X and that's it. It's gone forever not going to happen it's uh, pretty much simple as that okay excellent now basically uh, the last thing I would like to cover for today is how we can place a pending order from the chart directly we already did it the beginning is a bit incognito uh, but let's stress on it right now so we're looking at gold I'm right clicking on a specific uh, level at which I want to buy or let's say I want to sell up here where the pointer of my mouse is let me actually mark it for you up here where we placed a little arrow I want to sell up there so I'm gonna move the pointer of my mouse there I'm gonna right click and as you can see the first thing I have in the drop-down menu is sell limit one lot why sell limit because it's selling at a price which is higher than the current market price so by default the system is suggesting this is available to me maybe I want to buy it maybe I don't want to sell so the next thing I have is the trading sub menu and then I have sell limit one lot and buy stop one lot so now I can if I want to buy I can put a buy stop why because we're buying at the price higher than the current market price so basically the system is giving me the only two applicable options the only two options I can successfully use here if let's say sometimes people ask me why does it say one lot you know how you can change that that's actually uh, quite simple you just go down in the same drop-down menu to one-click trading you activate one-click trading uh, and change the lot size from there currently it's set at one lot 
So I'm going to change it to something funky. Let's say I'm going to change it to 77. A couple of lucky numbers there. Uh, there we go. Now, once again, right click and take a look at this. Cell limit at 0, 7, 7 lots. If I go to the trading submenu, I have sell limit at 077 and buy stop at 077. Next thing I have is an alert, so I can ask the system to make a sound, give me a pop-up when the price goes there, and that's it. Not, not really open positions, just alert me and then I'll do something. Uh, or I can just open a new, the new order window. That's also an option. Uh, not going to do it right now, I'm just going to put a sell limit. There we go. We did it entirely from the chart. No useless um, confirmation windows in the middle. Just right click, drop down menu, sell limit, and that's it. And now the line is displayed, as you can see, just where the orange arrow is. So basically this is just where we want it to have our uh, pending order. Price might not be exactly accurate, of course, because we just clicked on the chart. So we can drag it down, up to adjust it. We can right click it again, and then we'll get the modify, delete, and the trailing stop. I'm just going to click delete. And that's it, we got rid of it. Right. This uh, pretty much takes care of trading from charts. Maybe as some of you imagined it would be something highly complex. Well, actually, it's not. It's as simple as that. It's just a drop-down menu um, or those little buttons in the top left corner, which again are activated from a drop-down menu. Simple as that. Uh, can make your life a bit easier in terms of placing, moving about your uh, pending orders in your live orders. Now we're going to have a uh, short break for five minutes. Uh, by all means, please consider all any and all questions you might have. Uh, use the chat to send it to us so we can uh, address them right now if they're relevant to the topic. Uh, or if you're having trouble with the chat, you can also, there is a little button there, it says raise your hand. Uh, I can pass the mic over to you. Uh, you can just ask us your uh, address your question verbally. Um, basically, I'm here to help. It will be my pleasure. Uh, we will be back in five minutes, and we will go into our uh, question and answer session. Thank you for now. Right. Hello again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I do see that you're a bit shy today. We have just a few questions, uh, but I'm pretty sure... Um, quite a lot will pop up later on after the webinar, so let me use the opportunity to remind you uh, that you can send us all your questions or any feedback to uh, our email right after the end of this webinar. And of course, we'll make sure to, uh, this is actually answering uh, one of your questions. Uh, the question is, uh, can we get a summary of today's topic uh, in any form? <laughs> yes, by all means. We would always make sure to send out a summary of the um, topic that was discussed during a webinar to everyone, uh, actually not, not just to uh, the people who uh, had the time to uh, attend, but to basically everyone who was invited. So even if you don't have the time to uh, come see us at the next uh, webinar, we can make sure that you get a recording or a tutorial regarding the topic that was covered, topic or technique or strategy even, that was uh, discussed. Okay, yes, the, the next question that uh, I do want to address is a question regarding the chart types. It's a uh, whether which which of the three chart types is uh, better? That's the question. Okay. Uh, well, basically, what I would like to point out uh, right right here is that um, essentially uh, all of the three chart types have their own benefits, their pros and their cons. Um, in a nutshell, uh, I would 
uh, tend to use the candlesticks most, but it depends also on the situation. Sometimes, um, as we pointed out earlier, the line graph will help you by um, clearing up the, the noise, the visual noise from all those little lines and slashes and dots on the on the screen. Um, but essentially, I do prefer to use myself the candlestick uh, more than than the other um, two chart types. <laughs> he has a second question, uh, which is the most popular. Uh, we did actually mention that it is uh, at this current stage, at this current point in time, the candlestick chart type is the most popular chart type around the world, basically because it allows you to um, spot the so-called candlestick formations, which of course we will cover in one of our next webinars. <laughs> I see that there are quite a lot of questions regarding EAs, expert advisors or trading robots. Uh, we will, uh, by all means, we, we see those uh, guys, we will make sure to send you an answer on your email as we would like to keep the current um, discussion at a more introductory level. Uh, but by all means, we will make sure to send you the answers to your queries on your email and of course uh, we will be uh, organizing the um, expert advisor, the EA webinar, later on as well. Okay, right, I guess that's uh, uh, pretty much it. I would like to uh, once again thank every one of you um, for your participation today. Uh, Kiryu Tsenkov is my name. It's uh, definitely been a pleasure and I do hope we will see you all on our uh, next webinar on Friday. Uh, keep an eye on your inbox, uh, you will get the invitations of course and there's a lot more f uh, from where this came from. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, this will conclude uh, today's webinar and I hope I will see you once again on Friday. Have a great day. Good luck with your trading.